My name is Elaine Peritor. I worked for the Energy Education Division right out of college in 1985 to 1986. When I was in school, my teacher passed around a brochure to one of my education classes, and we all looked at it. Everybody in the class looked at it, and then it came to me, and I looked at it, and I got really excited because it talked about travel and speaking before audiences, and I got really excited. So I wrote down all the numbers and contact people and sent my resume out, and then I didn't hear anything for a while. So I got a phone call one day from the Department of Energy's Education Division, and they wanted to send me to Tennessee for an interview. Well, my mom didn't trust these people, this phone call, so she sent my sister down with me for the interview, so I stayed in a hotel in the airport and had lunch with uh, the director the next day, and I left right from there and found out that I had gotten the job. So they had a two-month training program in Tennessee where we would learn little mini speeches, maybe 15, 20 minutes, up to a half an hour, and then we would go to the local science museum and we would try out our memorized speeches in front of the tourists that would come to Oak Ridge. And I worked my way up to a speech that lasted almost an hour. So it was, I think it was 15 pages long I had to memorize. And uh, we took it little bits at a time. I would um, practice before my coworkers, I would practice before the directors. And then the very end, I practiced, or yeah, I could say I practiced in front of a live audience, in front of the people at the Science Museum. I spent most of my time training for this job in a place called Oak Ridge Associated Universities, which is a division under uh, the Department of Energy. And we had very knowledgeable scientists there that would come in and talk to us and help us through understanding the sometimes very complex scientific material that we were supposed to teach people. So we would learn speeches and then we tried to understand really what we were talking about. Because a lot of us weren't scientists, we were just educators going out and trying to do our best to educate students eventually and um, people in the science museum that we ended up practicing our speeches on. One of the lessons that I wanted to teach when I was on stage was about fossil fuels. Uh, since this is the Department of Energy and we were teaching energy education, uh, my presentation in particular talked about fossil fuels. So I had a big dinosaur on stage and his name was Dino. And in the middle of my speech, I would step on a lever and blow up this huge dinosaur, it was like 16 feet. And all the kids, usually the little ones, would start screaming and yelling and, and their teachers, I always knew every time I went to an elementary school, the teachers would have to calm them all down because <laughs> it was very exciting to see this big dinosaur blow up on stage. And I would have to introduce him, oh, hello, this is Dino the dinosaur and he's here to help us learn about fossil fuels. One of the experiments we did on stage was with liquid nitrogen. The kids really liked that. They were supposed to come on stage as volunteers, and I would show them how I would blow up a balloon, and they would dip it into the liquid nitrogen. And I was showing them how we can take a gas and we can turn it into a liquid. So we can also take a gas and transport it in a liquid form. So that was one of the experiments, and I also threw some liquid nitrogen into the audience, and as the liquid warmed up, it would cause a gas, and um, it would disappear, and the kids all screamed, and, and I loved to get that reaction out of them. When I was in the elementary school, we basically talked about how you can get a fuel from Dino the Dinosaur, that it stored solar energy, in the ground and it gets compressed over many years and after millions of years you can have coal or you can have oil or you can have natural gas and that was basically what we were trying to explain to most of the younger kids is you can have fuel 
that's stored in our ground, and this is how it happens. Our base camp for our job was pretty much Oak Ridge, Tennessee. So whenever we weren't on the road doing assembly programs for schools, we were back in Tennessee doing training. Uh, I had a driver's license from Tennessee, so basically I was a Tennessee resident for the time I worked there. And uh, other than that, we were just out in the schools. During the school year, I would travel to different schools, but whenever I wasn't at a school, I would be back in Tennessee either training um, or just being with the people I work with. I was a Tennessee resident, and I would just go out to the schools when school was in session. So if I wasn't at a school, I was in Tennessee at the training facility. I only worked for the Department of Energy for a year because we lost the educational grant after I was there for only a year. In a way, I was ready to leave because traveling every day is kind of difficult. And though I enjoyed the program, traveling is kind of hard when you have to live out of a suitcase and basically you're going from hotel to hotel. Being a shy high school student, it gave me the confidence to know I could do anything. And I know you hear things like this sometimes, but I think it significantly impacted me because I didn't know I could do something like that. I didn't think I had the confidence to do anything like that. I was on stage being an actress, a speech, making speeches, and giving information I never thought I could give. I was well trained, I felt confident, and I loved what I was doing. <laughs>